Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Saturday, August 23rd, 7.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. The 31st Lava Fountaining episode uh, at Kilauea is over. Can we get this to run? Yeah, it lasted a few hours, and we've live-streamed most of it over at Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Rumble. So go check it out. Excellent footage. We've also got a tropical storm, Fernand, in the Atlantic, just east of Bermuda. Good news, it will not be a direct hit. Buckle up, buttercup, and keep calm. It's boom time. Tropical storm, Fernand, forms south of Bermuda. Just days after Hurricane Aaron, tropical storm, Fernand, is now formed in the Atlantic and it's not the only system we'll, we're watching. We'll get to that in a moment. The good news is there's no threat to land. It's going to make its closest approach to uh, Canada's maritime there, eastern Canada, by Tuesday. But the rip current threat is real still from Florida to Maine. Here it is. It's insane. No swimming this week in the entire Atlantic on the East Coast. The coast with the most. Now... Aaron is not the only thing we're watching here. We got Fernand here. We've got another system disturbance one that may move into the Caribbean here. And so we're keeping a close eye on that. Uh, let's take a look at fire and smoke map version 4.2. Who knew? Now you do. The smoke is dissipating in the U.S., thankfully. And it's going to continue to do so because we've got precipitation in the West where most of these fires are. And by September... I think most of the wildfires will be out. Quick look over at TornadoHQ.com live severe weather map showing four severe weather warnings, three special marine, all up in the Great Lakes, a severe thunderstorm warning just uh, 20 minutes ago, Louisiana, Mississippi, and St. Tammany and Hancock counties. And now the full forecast. We've got dangerous heat in the West, coastal flooding, and high rip current risk through the weekend on the East Coast. Flash flooding concerns in the Southeast and Southwest as well. You could see those flood warnings in green. And we're looking for some burn scars in Nevada, potentially with some dangerous flash flooding. We have a dangerous record heat wave continuing across portions of the West through Tuesday, which is your lose day. High rip current risk and dangerous surf continue through the weekend on the entire East Coast. And there are flash flooding concerns through the weekend for portions of the Southeast and Southwest. And that rip current threat will continue because of the presence of Fernand moving on a similar path up the East Coast. You can see all that precipitation here in purple. But the West is the best. Take a look at this. It's going to continue to rain and rain all the way through September. And all of this rain should put out most of these fires. Seismic update. No real quakes of note. The Kamchatka is relentless and continues to rumble here. We did have uh, some major activity in El Salvador earlier today with a 6.0. That baby was offshore, so probably not a lot of damage. And certainly no tsunami warnings. What's happening here in South Kakalaki? Well, several earthquakes, including a 3.0, holy macaroni, in Kornaka, South Carolina. That is, well, that is a very unique rumbler there, if I might say. Scientists explain why Kilauea's current lava fountains are sideways. Ooh, I wonder if this one... I'm now to Kilauea, where lava is still pumping at Hale Ma'uma'u Crater. Episode 31 started at about 2 this afternoon. And as you can see, the fountain is spewing at an interesting sideways angle, reaching heights of more than 325 feet. The scientist in charge of the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory tells us the lava is shooting out at 30 degrees because of the shape of the vent. For episodes 29 and 30 lost the ability to go to the really high fountains. They were only uh, somewhere between 100 and 300 feet high. That's because after episode 28, the vent kind of slumped and part of the cone slumped into the vent and it changed the configuration. The USGS says the fountains would be more than 500 feet high if they were going straight up. 
Our meteorologist Jennifer Robbins joins us now with a VOG forecast. Jen. Oh, so fascinating to see that and the angle matters. The foggy conditions south of the islands, but by the time we get into Sunday, see that dispersed all the way to even the western end of the state. Due to lighter winds coming our way, we will be seeing a lighter wind flow Sunday into Monday. But for now, we're talking about breezy trade winds, anywhere from 10 to 15 at times 20 miles per hour. And you can actually see those lighter winds coming our way for Sunday into Monday. Your weekend does call for beautiful trade wind weather for your Saturday and then those trade winds starting to fade away a little bit for Sunday into Monday. So there you have it. Uh, the configuration of the lava exit point has changed and that's why the lava is fountaining sideways. You can check it all out at Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Rumble where we've got over seven hours of that footage. I hope it just won't play. So go check that out. We've got a lot of other good shows happening tonight. But before we get to those updates, let's talk about Worldwide Volcano News. We've got Kilauea's 31st Lava Fountaining episode ending after 12 hours of fountaining. Ibu today to 7,000 feet. Awu on the list with unrest happening there. Agung unrest as well. Liwatobi to 10,000. Swanasima, 8,000 foot puff today. Liwotolo to 7,000 foot. Sakonajima on the list to 8,000 there. And Fuego, possible light volcanic ash. Raventador to 15,000 feet. Santa Guito, possible light volcanic ash. And wrapping up the list is Ducono to 6,000 feet. Which brings us to space weather. We did have some spicy activity today. Low level M flaring, impulsive C flaring as well. And this is because we've got some developing sunspot regions most importantly, active region 4191. Let's take a look at the current HMI, the latest HMI intensity, and we will see how that sunspot group is developing. You can see a little plage following the big sunspot, and that's where some of the flaring was occurring today. Three-day geomagnetic forecast, we've got a slight rise up to maybe KP4 for the 25th and the 26th, just days before my birthday. KP currently at two. So I will be turning... 54 on August 28th. And hopefully this and that with Josh and Zach will be interviewing me tomorrow and I will be able to get you the link to the podcast. So if you don't follow this and that with Josh and Zach, you come over to X and follow them there or go to TikTok or this and that with Josh and Zach.com. And in just a few minutes, over at Magnetic Reversal News on Rumble is our son overdue for a super flare. Neanderthal gene flow into modern humans 50,000 years ago and more topics. A fascinating science expose. So please head over to Rumble to Magnetic Reversal News and join us for a weekend of science. And right after that show on Magnetic Reversal News on YouTube, the Younger Dryas Impact Evidence, Hot Blobs, and a 2.65 million year old teeth recently found. Well, we will break it all down on our new science show, Science Without Consensus. So join us at 9 p.m. for that show and 8 p.m. for this one. All the links will be below. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share this video, and join us for two more hours of mind-blowing science. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that is a boom. <laughs>